Hey, what's up? I put this pillow here so I'd be able to tell where the center of the camera is. Uh, I don't think I want to sit with this pillow here the whole time. So, I'm going to move it back over here where it belongs. As you can see, I am roughing, repping, roughing, I am who? I am roughing. I am repping my Buff Corral merch. I am a Buff Corral fan. Um, I think he does great covers on YouTube. Uh, he's not a great singer. His dancing skills are phenomenal. I appreciate the heart and soul of him. Uh, because he loves his fans. He always takes requests for songs to do. And I appreciate that a lot. So, go subscribe to Buff Corral on YouTube. We love Buff Daddy. Uh, anyhow, I'm just going to talk about a bunch of topics because it's been a while since I've posted a YouTube. So I'm just going to do whatever today. It's going to be a lot of music stuff today. So just a warning on that. I'd like to start off by giving a few song recommendations for songs I've been listening to lately, right? So, I think we're going to start it off with, I think, the latest song I've had on repeat. Uh, Taking It Back by Toto off of their self-titled debut album. Uh, this one is one of the few songs off of that album not written by David Page. Page? I hope I'm... Page? 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 I, ah, I feel bad. Um, basically... That song, Taking It Back, is written by Steve Percaro. Uh, it's one of the few songs on a Toto album written by him. And I think it's actually really good. It is a very good song. And one of the things you'll notice first with that song is that there's no backing vocals. It's just Steve on lead. And he never sings other than when he sings lead on his few and far between songs that he writes on a Toto album. Um, and I like this song a lot. It opens up with this very cool synthesizer part. Um, it, it just sounds like something you'd expect from music today. It, it feels ahead of its time, this little synthesizer solo in the beginning. Um, I love the beat of the song. Of course, Jeff Bricaro always brings his best. Um, I'm overall, I just like the song. I like the lyrics. Um, just, just trying to think of it. Uh... I might, I might put them on screen just so you can get an idea of kind of what I'm talking about here. Because um, I, I don't know the song too well yet, but when I listen to it, I'm like, oh, this is just, this feels good to listen to. Um, definitely, I think, a Yacht Rock classic. Uh, next up, Visions by Charlie XCX off of her recent album from actually this year. I'm listening to music from this year, the current year. Whoa. Uh, it's off of the album How I'm Feeling Now. Uh, this one, I think, ends this album per just really well. This is a very strong way to end this album. Uh, the whole album just has really great production behind it, especially when you consider that the whole thing was made in six weeks during quarantine. It came together really well. Uh, and this song in particular, I love how it ends the album. I like a lot of the vocal parts throughout the album, but this song in particular just builds up intensity, and it feels very much like a song you could hear at, like, a rave or something, and you could just get turned to it. I would get turned to the song. I love, I love how it ends, and it just, it, listening to the song on its own is great, but I love, I prefer listening to it in the context of the album, because it just feels... I feel more power behind the song when I listen to it in that context. So I would highly recommend this one. It is very good. Uh, finally, we're going to recommend Boogie on Reggae Woman off of Stevie Wonder's Fulfilling This Is First Finale. Uh, this one, I don't want to describe this one. It's it's that, that album is out of Stevie Wonder's classical period. I listened to that period of his music way earlier, like, I'm talking maybe five years ago or something like that, and I just kind of missed this album for some reason, and I'm kind of glad I did, because I get to listen to it now with more 
knowledge and understanding of music, and I just get more out of this album as a result, I feel like. So, I just, I'm enjoying listening to this a lot, this whole album, and this song is undoubtedly one of the highlights on it. You've got, the piano is undoubtedly the highlight of this song, and I'm talking, you know, sure, there's synthesizers and the Yamaha throughout the whole thing, but, like, straight piano, there's a lot of it throughout um, Fulfilling This' is first finale, and this song is one of the highlights of it, because it's just him grooving on the piano as he's got his vocal line just smooth. It feels great. It feels great to listen to. Um, he's also got two harmonica solos on this song, and they are both great. The whole, the, all of his harmonica is always great, but you know, there's a lot of harmonica on this album, and this is just a fine example of him using it well. Uh, it feels very, fit, it fits well with this song. Um, it's got kind of a jazzy feel, I'd say. Not like, not, not full jazz, but you know, it's laid back, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I just noticing, looking through it too, he did every single instrument on this song, except for the congas. Uh, so he played a ton on this song in particular. And you know, he plays most of his instruments on his songs anyways, but it's, it's just a great song. I, again, recommend it. So, yeah, there are my recommendations again. Taking It Back by Toto, Visions by Charlie XCX, and Boogie on Reggae Woman by Stevie Wonder. Uh, I guess let's talk about the fact that I want to make an album in the next couple years. And I want to talk a little bit about my thoughts and what I want to get out of that album and what I want to make of that project. So let's, let's first address Sean, my good friend Sean. Uh, I've known the whole time that I've thought about this album, which has been years at this point, that it's not happening without him. There's, there's no way. Um, and it's, it's partially because he is a very, um, his musicianship is amazing. I love how he's able to just work on stuff for so long and perfect it. He's, he works to prove something to himself first and foremost. He speaks so much through music. I just, I admire him a lot of, as a musician, um, but also as a friend. Um, and that's what comes more importantly, is our friendship. And that's something that I have both of those in him. And so there's, it just fits too well that he would have to be such a huge part of this album. And I don't think he even realizes how much I want him to be involved with this, you know? Uh, you know, I, I can just very well see it that piano is such a huge thing on this album. Um, big thing. Uh, so, how, how do I explain that? Like, I could see... I almost want it to be the type of album at this point in time. Because my thoughts seem to change a lot. Uh, the more I think about this album, but as of right now, I would like this album to be very piano-centric and very focused on that, and we can kind of toy around a little bit with genres and such. Um, some of my ideas are, I'd love to have Sean have one of his classical pieces, uh, just a more classical piano piece with no vocals. I'd love to have that featured on the album at some point. Um... I think a, I think there'd be a few tracks with just piano and vocals, basically. That'd be about it. Um, at least a couple of those. You know, backing vocals, too, which I'll, I'll get to those. Uh, I think some of those might feature me on bass, too. I think I... And I it could be bass guitar. Could be upright bass. I'm not sure. Um, part of it is that I need to get an upright bass, obviously. So, I don't have one at the moment. I haven't even played upright bass in over a year, which is weird. Uh, but I know that that would... There'd, ha there'd be some good use of upright bass. I'm talking we could even have the main bass line be on an upright bass, you know? Something different. Something different for... Pop music, not, I don't know what, pop, pop, 
the word pop music is just weird because now it's kind of a genre. It's kind of its own genre, but like in reality, you know, pop music is supposed to mean popular music, you know, and that's what it's traditionally been called. So, um, what else would I like to discuss? I think that there will be some songs that feature other live instruments being played, you know, um, just different people being featured, such as with drum parts, um, other percussion parts, guitars, of course, and, you know, horn sections. Uh, I think some songs might just have, like, a produced beat. I, I think that it, it might just work for this album. I don't know if I want it to be anything too big and crazy, so I don't think we need big, crazy drum parts on every single song necessarily for this. Um, backing vocals. Let's talk about those backing vocals. I want to just... It, it, it interests me so much. It intrigues me. The, I, the potential that I would get to work with different voices and different vocal blends. I, you know, I just toying around with having this person try on this part and seeing how that sounds and then being able to find which voices sound good together to find the blend that sounds right for this particular song. That just, oh, that sounds so cool to me, being able to toy around with that and figure out what sounds great for that specific song. I love thinking about that. Um, that just really sounds cool to me. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing backing vocals. I think I'm going to sing a lot of them, but I also want to bring in other people to sing a lot of backing vocals too. Uh, because they can do a lot more than I can in some cases. It just brings in more possibilities for what we can accomplish. Uh, let's talk about the fact that I want to have an overture and an entract for this album. Yeah, so basically, I think... I want to have some sort of steady theme or leitmotif going throughout the whole album. Um, and I don't know exactly what it would represent, but it would just pop up throughout the album. And so, I want to have that. So obviously, we open up the overture with that. But then the overture also, the overture and the entract, in different styles of course, is just a test of what, how my arrangement skills, of how can I take these themes, these songs that I use, melodies, throughout the rest of the album and translate them into a different style for the sake of making a medley. Um, and that sounds really cool to me. Like, I think I want to make the overture probably like a big band jazz piece. I I'm not sure, but I've thought about that before, and it might be a little smaller scale now because I think I'm scaling back the album a little bit my the instrumentation of it, I think I'm scaling it back a bit with the whole piano thing, piano focus. Um, but the on track would definitely be like a classical, definitely be very classical, um, orchestral, I should say. Uh, that sounds very cool uh, to me to be able to work with arranging the the melodies in different ways, just to see how they can translate into into different genres and such. I, I really want to do that, and I think it would just be cool, it would set the album apart, you know, to be like, we open with this, that kind of sets, lets you know what's going to happen throughout the rest of the album, lets you know what you're going to hear. I really like that idea for an album, because you just don't hear that happen a ton on, like, a pop album, you know? Uh, and I'm aware that I don't think this is going to be mainstream at all. I don't think... I'm not aiming for mainstream. I'm not even aiming to, like, necessarily have a huge audience. If, if, if there are people that listen to this at all, that's cool. That's super cool, because they are... That means that someone got something out of stuff that I wrote and I produced with other people, you know? So, this group, whatever it ends up being, we were able to make something, we were able to make a product that people enjoyed and related to or just understood, learned something from, I don't know. But if I can get that at all, that's cool. But it's also that I want to make this for me, too. I want to make this and 
express my feelings about the last few years of my life since I left high school and did my year of college and now I've been kind of just working I think I've had a lot of thoughts about what I what kind of stuff I want to write and so I'm doing this first and foremost to express something and get stuff off my chest because I think a lot of this album is going to be me expressing regret for sure about a lot of actions discussing my thoughts on topics I don't I don't know if it's going to discuss a ton of political stuff you know I know a lot of people do that in their music but I don't know if that's going to happen so much but just things I'm passionate about and I feel like I can write music about you know um I would like to be able to just make this album and express what's on my mind um That'd be pretty good. I actually think I've I've been moving at a pretty good pace here. I, I haven't really gone too in depth about anything, but I did I just want to keep this video moving so it's not like dwelling on one topic for too long and you know, taking forever to get through this and I feel like I've been talking pretty smoothly, which is good. Uh a little bit of Oz, of course, you know. That's that's what happens with me, but yeah, I guess that's that's most of it. I'm sure there's stuff I forgot, but I don't know. I I, I think that kind of you get the gist of what I want to write. You know, I wanna I want to feature session musicians, of course, who can play on tracks, and you know, just local people who can bring their stuff to a couple songs on the album. You know, depending on what I need, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I, I'm going to check the time on the video real quick. Okay. I've got less than three minutes left to record, and I'm probably not centered anymore, which is a rip. But, yeah, I guess the only other thing I'm going to say is I've been trying to occasionally stream on Twitch. Uh, it's been going all right. Uh... I've mostly just been streaming Donkey Kong 64 Randomizer. Uh, Sean's usually there. Casey, we got Tyler or Andrew. Uh, and yeah, we're not up to too much, but it's fun. Uh, it's just cool that anyone shows up and watches it, so I don't know. I don't really send out too much promotion ahead of time, but if you would like to get that promotion and figure out when we're going to stream, I do have a Twitter that I will link in the bio and the description of this video below. Um, I'll link the Twitch too, but probably not going to stream tonight. Uh, I mean, I could. I could, actually. Maybe I will. Who knows? I'll, I'll announce in the description if, if I'm going to stream tonight. So, yeah, it'd be cool to see you if you feel like showing up. Uh, we're probably just going to finish up my current run of DK64 randomizer tonight if I do decide to stream tonight so yeah I guess that's it for this video so I appreciate you watching uh, thank you and I hope that you enjoyed me rambling for 20 minutes or so about music and such I hope that you got something out of this I'm not I know I'm not gonna edit this at all so it's just going straight up like this. So, all right. Uh, have a good one. Maybe I'll post another one of these next week or something. Who knows? All right. Goodbye. Toodaloo.